now it's Hello. recording i've checked so okay so you're in singapore now what are you doing in singapore um I, i'm i have i know i have to speak about being a producer and being a director and being a philippine director so three things one for producers network one for a film lab and then one as a uh, you know, celebration of the philippine centennial thing on cinema all part of the program of singapore international film festival so that's why i'm here in singapore um could you tell us a little bit about your background and where you grew up and what it was like growing up in manila <laughs> <laughs> sorry well, i'm just trying to give i'm just trying to give my audience a little bit of context you know and to understand where you come from as a filmmaker <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, oh, no. uh, most important part is my encounter with a video camera because my father used to have the dark room uh, at the back of our house mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and so I would see him go in and out of this dark room for image to be developed through the, uh, through the processing and uh, things that, we, that, that, that he does with his uh, lab assistant. And so when I enter the the room uh, from from the dark image images with the with sur- surface so processing developing, at the, at the time I was about to give up basketball, which was the, the basketball court was just um, beside the the, the dark room. <laughs> and everyone was suddenly taller, and I had to give up that one. And my father, you know, had had a lot of cameras like lying there at home uh, and so I was kind of you know I was kind of already at home with seeing all these tools that my father would I don't know would, uh, capture image by and so in the 80s he would have you know he would turn to video uh, Betamax VHS tapes you know even deck to deck editing and so I that was when I I learned how to edit and when editing um, before um, non-linear editing meant um, you had to time the start of every shot um, actually by developing a sense of rhythm because it wasn't really exact. The way it works is um, one deck is playing and the other deck would record over what's playing. Um, but the the, no, the the record button wouldn't engage immediately as you turn on the, as you press the button record it would engage between one and two seconds so you okay. there was no exact thing so you had to develop your own sense of rhythm to it so that was also pretty magical for me a big part of I know of the magic that uh, I'm drawn to with with regard to video mm-hmm. analog video VHS is was my own personal viewing of, of I know of, of videotapes. You know? um, uh, people would knock on an art door for videotapes to be rented. Um, so we had a, always had a treat you know, when when they would open their their bags and show us the, you know titles. And we would always opt for Jackie Chan, martial arts, kung fu films. You know? Yeah, my father also a big fan of uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, Cynthia Roth, the Roth Rock kilala mo ba yan? no <laughs> so, so that that in, uh, and and then uh, so so with with the tapes no we would get extra fe- uh, bonus features when when uh, when the the film would sometimes end and we would later learn that uh, that they are just tape- taping over the old tapes no with uh, new films so so if the uh, no, the new films would were, were were shorter we would get an extra feature uh, last 10 minutes of the uh, the previously uh, their uh, the previously uh, shown film film so it is it is nice resurfacing nice like a ghost <laughs> would you say that you you look at the world around you the same way that you point your camera at it um see you know um it, it's like having a friend that um that i was too shy to directly look and so i had a friend who let me look through <laughs> and i'm gonna because because uh, also at the time that when uh, maybe years after uh, I graduated graduated from college, 
uh, my friends would all be in the corporate world and I didn't have other people to speak with and so I had the camera all, all by myself and had and had some a lot of a lot of time to you know now I say I say hone the craft but at that time I it really felt like it was just having a friend you know right. um, just to record things whatever form it was right yeah, but clearly it, it was <coughs> out of a curiosity about surroundings and about the world and about questions that I had uh, personal personally mm-hmm. so, so can you know, you- I, I kind of did develop this already deep an understanding about you know hold, even holding the camera. Yeah. So maybe I think that maybe it's a good point to talk about um, Todo Todo Teros, which is your first feature, um, mm. which which was your first feature, um, and you'd made two no you'd made three short films before that. Those were I know those were what I called Kamustahan videos because. If uh, I, 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 there was a period when I would just disappear and hear other friends um, ask other friends, Kamusta si John? How is John? And so um, I think I was, you know, I, that, was, that was a way for me to respond, you know, to make those short videos to answer, Kamusta ako? So those were really, you know, really emo videos about <laughs> love, about ano, college sweetheart, no, mag, <laughs> kasi ch- easy pa ng mga titles, para run on sentence, uh, run on sentence, just to, ano, make it, to have, uh, to espouse a certain rhythm to things. Nas. <laughs> Ganun ba, ano? Papa, I was, ano, I, I had too much time. One of the three films got invited to um, a festival in Berlin. It was a small festival. It, it doesn't it doesn't uh, exist anymore. It's an Asian festival. Okay. That was the first time I I traveled alone and really away from the country. And it was a nice time to uh, to just um, have this real space that no one even knew me. If I got if I got lost in Berlin. Fortunately, uh, one one person was assigned to me, <laughs> and there was there was a no there was a, a, as you might have felt watching the film, there was a real connection between us. Well, from my view, <laughs> I know, and um, I felt like um, the diary of this of the uh, of these few days with with the guide. I know was you know, was was something that I really wanted to edit as a small uh, as a short piece, just as a memento for myself. Mm-hmm. But when I was editing, um, I really felt that uh, there was a call to to make this into an expanded thing. There was also tension in my personal life because um, my my I had a girlfriend in in Manila, and and this is this is this was not something that I wanted to wanted to hide. Yeah. So, oh, she wants. So, she wants uh, to be included. <laughs> so, um, I, I thought that you know, I would I would edit something into uh, a piece that um the public will see. Um, okay. So I, I committed to that, <clears throat> uh, and there I I thought that there was a responsibility for for the piece to be, I know at least thought out. No, to um to ask um real questions that I really had honestly been thinking about myself. But um, because I think about myself, I also think in the larger sphere, um, the community I was in, the country, uh, what, what things that were happening at that time. And so everything was kind of you know, um, uh, ring at, ringing very uh, united uh, in, in unison in a way because um, right. things would respond and, and uh, bounce off each other mm-hmm. and it felt like um, making making a film my way you know not being you know not being um, schooled really properly as to the making of the film but making it just because I wanted to and, and even though their things are vague and being asked um, you know I, I know I I felt like um, to make 
this film would you know would be uh, good not only for me but uh, this could be shared to other people at the same time confront my loved one in Manila right do you feel like your filmmaking has evolved since then and what's what's happening for you now with your filmmaking oh, I like to think so because um I immediately I got really tired of sick and tired hearing my voice and, and sick and tired of just um, resorting to things that I was comfortable with I, I really didn't I don't know, feel like repeating myself and so every time every film I would strip off one major element so after the second film the third film I think um, I had less and less of the narration more and more of more um, documentation mm -hmm. and role play and syncing and non-syncing of sound um, um, <coughs> on celluloid instead of video going now with uh, decaying celluloid and unsync video and assigning subtitles not to mean what you're hearing no not to translate what you're hearing all these things that I know that, that maybe have offended other people <laughs> but but um so so to answer again also in another way um i i thought that um from the start which is more dealing with the daily diary essay uh, diary footage i went on with it with you know with um um first uh you know i i had to make the film about my father years when i was a child outside big big hero of mine yeah um and then after the father um i stripped off um like i i really was not interested anymore about what people are saying even from a distance you no know? i was more interested about music and how i just wanted to assign things you no know? um, um assign meaning to even things that are uh, erroneous you know? How have your how have your films been been received generally? Do you think like back in domestically as well as internationally? How because I want to I want because you said yesterday <laughs> this thing about people coming up to you um, and saying that they didn't understand that they don't understand something and you that and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this tension again yeah. and, and why you find that so interesting. So so from the start, this is nice also to for my daughter to know how people would um, get my film. Um, um, people would really struggle with the text of the film um, and so try to understand you know, what story this is, even as, as a loose story, as a vague story. So when, when after the, after the, no, uh, so of course you, you will get a lot of walkouts from the start, uh, from even Todo Todo Terros. So attending festivals have to to have uh, the walkouts of of course disheartening, but yeah, I, uh, I was rewarded by the few people who stayed and and um, told me um, that they did not understand, of course, what you know, everything that they needed to know, but that there was a swelling of emotion or or a description of experience that that uh, that is stuck inside them that they wanted to. to to communicate but not through words because um <laughs> these are vague um and can hardly be described through words no? which i feel is, is is miraculous because um this is also how i feel no uh, expressing myself no um, um i am for you know this um maybe this this a description of a thing that i am not really um, already th th that is not already formed um, but somehow is very real mm -hmm. no um, it's because I, I deal with fragments no <laughs> and I don't and I don't even as I complete the edit I, I don't think I've arrived at something that's whole no okay. I think there is al al always the question that is being posed and it, it, the journey. It's corny to to know to say, but it's still you know very much a journey. But uh, thank you to uh, to people who are here and uh, have 
watch the film. Thank you to Anna and, and Richard for for programming and to have the opportunity to show this film. I think this is the you know this is the first for, for a long time uh, for for Toto Toto Terras in in the UK screening in the UK. We're very so happy re- to be a part of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.